Hi, welcome or welcome back to this channel. My name is Carly and today I thought I would tell you all about the books that I read in the first quarter of the year. So January, February, March. I read a total of 12 books. I think so far it's been pretty good. I think there's a couple of five stars. And there was quite a few DNFs, which honestly feels pretty good to have to say I'm not enjoying these books and to set them down. But I thought as I told you about these books, I would bring you along as I do some get ready morning stuff with me. So I hope you enjoy. Not the best. What is what we got? Why am I acting embarrassed? I'm the only one home. I've worn this shirt since like last summer and it's like finally feeling like spring and I'm gonna wear it. I'm still cold. It's like 50 degrees out and I have my window open because because my mom cleaned my floors yesterday. <laughs> it was very nice of her. First book I want to talk about that I finished in this year of 2024. Not my reading journal, my personal journal, but I also keep track of it. Oh, is Get a Grip. Get a Grip. Get a Grip. But this was a book I read for work. Um, just like a novelized like help-esque book. I don't really know how else to explain it. It has ideas on what they think helped make a business run well, um, specifically a small business with its executive sort of deal. Uh, and it follows fictional characters to portray the, this idea that they have. Read it for work, for fun, and um, we have implemented some of the ideas at my job and it has been working out really well. I did not rate this, um, but it is a book that I read and finished in 2024. So that's why that's there. Getting into the fun ones, the next book on this list is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. That book, I'm using my camera lens to do my hair and stuff. That one, that one, that one. I really, 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 really enjoyed it. Brandon Sanderson books are so intimidating to me and this book in particular is intimidating but yet when I read them I just like fly through them and I feel like I got through them quicker than I would have expected. Um, this one was no exception. I'm trying to think how do I even explain the plot? You're following multiple different people. There's a war that's been going on for many many years. One of our main characters fought in the war but now he's a slave and is sort of given um, the shit job for whatever army he is now like a slave for um, but it turns out he has like I guess magical powers. You've also got one girl who is trying to scam basically one of the princesses to help her family out but then turns out she has more knowledge and powers than I originally thought. Then we have another guy who was known to be like this really badass army fighter man who is now like almost toned down which is so completely different than what the society expects from him and they're all sort of coming together to figure out some of the secrets of their world. <laughs> um, I don't really know how to explain it because there is so much that goes on. This is like an over a thousand page book. There's a lot that happens um, and it's hard to explain but it is really good and I am so glad I read it and I plan to start the second one sometime soon hopefully within the next month let's do one more book while I am sitting here what have we got oh I read a lot in February third book that I read was Caravel Wave Kings I gave five out of five Caravel I gave three out of five stars to we don't know what Caravel is it's book by Stephanie Garber. It's YA fantasy. You follow these, well, you follow one sister and she is, her dad picked out who she's gonna marry and she doesn't know who it is. She's been exchanging letters but her dad is like abusive and has been, um, hasn't really given her fully enough information about it. Well, um, and yeah, and then she has been Wanting, our main sister Scarlet has been wanting, has been writing to Legend, who runs this game carnival kind of thing, Caravelle, uh, about once a year. And she's been trying to get 
her and her sister tickets to Carabelle to like because she's the older sister and she wants to treat her sister to something. Her younger sister Tella to something. And Tella, what ends up happening is that both Scarlet, both Scarlet and Tella end up in a Carabelle game where the game is that they need to find Tella. And, and then it goes from there. It was a lot of fun. I'm not a huge YA YA person, but like, it was a lot of fun and I enjoyed it more than I thought I would at my age, so three out of five currently still trying to read through that whole series this is the perfume i've been wearing recently i really enjoy it later all right i'm ready i'm dressed for the day all right book review turns into cooking time all you need is pasta um some type of balsamic vinaigrette or also what works is italian dressing i've used that before uh mozzarella and cucumber usually i will add basil and also basil to this but i don't have any there wasn't any other store when i was buying ingredients also tomatoes and i think some type of pepper or like a red onion would work well in there but i don't like peppers and i don't like tomatoes so i don't add it um red onion's a new one because my roommate roommate my co-worker made this and she said she added red onion and that said it was good and that sounds good but i don't have a red onion so we're going with the bare minimum. All right, next book that I read this year was uh, Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents. This one, I think I wanted more from. Um, I don't typically read nonfiction, so this is really like my first foray this year. And I thought it was fine. There were some interesting discussions in there but it kind of felt like it was going in circles. Not to mention, it felt like it was very much for a specific type of emotionally immature parent kind of thing. And so I, what I was looking for, I didn't really see reflected in the book, but it was interesting. And I'm still like glad I read it. Okay. All right, next book on this list, this is book number five was love in the big city this book follows our main character who is sort of like an author mary sue i don't want to call him mary sue but it follows our main character and kind of describes three four ish different really important relationships in his life and just the things happening in his life the book is slow it is not for everyone but man oh man did it speak to me just, i don't know it was it just had some very specific situations in there that very specifically related to me and so i could relate to them and while the actions our kind of character took were not the actions that i had or would take it still the emotional weight of what was being presented it spoke to me i don't know what else to say it was a five out of five for me but a also feel like I would have a hard time uh, recommending this book to everyone because of it's it's not it's not a book for everyone but it it was the book for me <laughs> what I've got next next on this recipe is mozzarella but also next book I read this is book number six was check and mate by Ali Hazelwood um, this is her nonfiction romance book I enjoyed it it gave it was the same enjoyment that I got when I read Love Hypothesis, um, except YA. There were just little things that sort of bugged me, I guess more or less the self. I don't, our main character was like parentified, I think is the word I want to use. And so I think a lot of my frustration just came from more traditional YA trope where our main character, um, is just not listening to reason despite everyone around her speaking reason so that's i think where my enjoyment dipped but overall i enjoyed the chess aspect even though i i don't know how to play chess and have no interest in playing chess um and once again the male lead is like top tier which she has a way with male leads because i loved this one just as much as i loved 
the one in love hypothesis so check and mate got a three and a half out of five for me um just trying to think on here the next book one last maybe two last books here because the next book on this list i do know for a fact is from a saint martin's press um subsidiary uh so i don't know if that boycott is still going on um but i'm just gonna be on the safe side and not speak about it uh which is fine because the book doesn't deserve my breath any more it was not great uh moving on next one last book i read in february was percy jackson and the chalice of the gods um while the books themselves are definitely middle grade um they're still a very fun time and i hound all of them and i still enjoy reading them i still only gave it like a three out of five but um they're still good books they are still a fun time and i would still recommend them let's try my pasta salad I could eat this entire bowl today. I could. I'm gonna try not to, so I can have some for tomorrow, but I could easily eat this all day. Like I could eat this all in one sitting. This is now turning into a mukbang. All right, let's round off this first quarter book review video with the books that I read in March. Um, first one that I finished in March was The Devil Makes Three. This is a YA book um, and it follows two characters. They both go to this kind of pre prestigious prep school. Um, the guy, his dad is a very famous-esque professor there and is rich and our lead, male lead um, doesn't really have a good relationship with his father. Our male lead also is a witch, does magic, which she learned from his mom who is dying. And then our female lead is at this prep school because she wanted, um, hi, she wanted, um, to create a better life for her sister who didn't have the same opportunities that our female lead was having um, and their parents are broke after a failed business venture um, and so they are able to go to the school because their aunt or great aunt works at the school and at the beginning the male lead and our female lead come together to look for books in the library because our female lead was working in the library as a work study and they accidentally set a devil free and it follows them this book was so much better than i thought it would be it was it was a lot of fun but it was also there were times where it was just like really creepy and spooky um which i was not expecting but i enjoyed not like over the top because i'm not like a horror spooky scary girly but this was like an appropriate amount i thought especially for a ya book and i liked the romance between the two leads the female lead they had good chemistry together and like our female lead is very worried about the male lead using his power and privilege to basically ruin her life and so she is very wary of the relationship between the, the two of them and the guy understands this and whenever she pushes him away he always tries to like give her her space which is very refreshing to read about especially in a YA book and yeah I I enjoyed it I gave it three and a half out of five but I enjoyed it if that sounds interesting to you would recommend yeah, I might still have pasta salad. Next book I have on this list is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. This was a reread for me because I had I just gotten Help It, and as of filming this video, I just finished Help It, um, and so I wanted to reread Ninth House to refresh my memory before going into Help It, which I am glad I did. Gave this star four out of five stars again. This follows Alex Stern, who is at Yale as a part of some delegate to make sure the secret societies are following directions and not hurting or harming anything and she gets caught up in a 
murder mystery as well as trying to find her um trying to find Darlington who was the guy who was sort of teaching her the ropes and has gone missing by the beginning of the book. I really enjoyed the book and a spoiler alert I really I enjoyed Hellbent more but Ninth House is so good. I love the characters. I do admit that I felt like reading wise I would find myself drifting and I don't know if that's because I'm reading it at night and I just had a very busy few months at work and so then it's hard for me to concentrate and I'm like missing parts and aspects that are happening and but I don't know if that's because again I'm tired when I'm reading this or if it is a writing issue but even trying to type up a synopsis for myself was a little difficult now I feel like I've got the plot of the book but there was just kind of so much going on and I didn't really it all connects but also it's hard to see where it connects I don't know how else to explain it um, but that's Ninth House. I still really enjoy it and the series and yeah four to five. Next one was a little novella I read. This is book 11. It's called Even Though I Knew the End and I can't remember the author. Um, little novella. Uh, I gave it two and a half out of five. It follows um, lesbians in the 30s or 20s. Somewhere around there. I can't quite remember. Our main character is has sold her soul to the devil. 10 years prior and now her time is coming up and she is given one last chance to find out who the serial killer in the city is um, and if she can do that then she will get her soul back. It was fine. I liked the ideas I just because it's a novella I just don't feel like it was able to fully expand on the ideas and the plot in a way that made it more fulfilling to read. And I think a little bit of my unenjoyment of this book was because the author had previously written another book that I greatly disliked. So I think once I figured that out, I went into this book and was just already waiting for disappointment. While I saw the end coming and I expected it, I am still not a fan of it. And the last book that I read in the first three months of this year is Legendary by Stephanie Garber, the second book in the Caravelle series. This one follows... Um, Tella this time around instead of Scarlet and as she also has to play and try to figure out who Legend is and yeah um, I enjoyed Legendary more than I enjoyed Caravelle. I think I enjoy reading from Tella's point of view way more than I enjoy reading from Scarlet um, and I enjoyed the twist and turns of this one a lot more than I enjoyed them in the first book. I'll come back later for a wrap up. I just went over the 12 books that I did read. I thought I would tell you at least the names of the books that I DNF'd before we finish this up. Um, first one I DNF'd this, this year, yeah, this year, is was Trouble the Saints. I don't remember who this is by. I'm not looking at the one that has all my authors listed, but it sounds really cool, uh, magical in this, and someone who is like kind of almost past their prime being dragged back in. Sounds cool. It just wasn't for me. I was listening to this and it just had the most, it, it was like every line was a metaphor. And then some of them I was just like, why do we need to be saying this? Like we don't need to be saying this. <laughs> um, and so yeah, that was, that was a disappointment, unfortunately. And I DNF'd it. February I DNF'd two more books. Um, first one is Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I hadn't really heard many great things about this but I decided to give it a chance anyway and I did not make it very far before I just decided to put it down. I could not do it. The male lead, like these are adults, and the male lead um, liked our female lead so much that he wouldn't talk to her and he was ignoring her and he, if they were to work on a project together he would like basically cancel the project it was beyond <laughs> ridiculous so did not make it very far in that one and then the other one that I DNF was Jay's gay agenda <sighs> it was just it was just it was just something it, it was just something <laughs> immediately had to listen about how this kid figured out he was gay at a Sean Mendez concert which I think is fine but I was obviously not the target demographic for this book and I did not have a good time with the amount with what I had read and then I read spoilers 
and I really was not gonna have a good time. If I already wasn't having a good time, I was not gonna have a good time if I continued. So we, we stopped, I stopped. And so yeah, for the first three months of the year, those are the 12 books that I read and the three books that I DNF'd. Um, I am excited going forward into this year, more reading. Um, already read some really great ones, a couple of books past this, and I just had some good reading months as well. And there's so many books that I am just like so excited to pick up and read and just like read in general. I am feeling in a very reading mood as I record this. Those are the books. Tell me what you thought, please. Have you read any of these? Are there any ones that I should read, should check out? Um, anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you have a good rest of your day, night, morning, afternoon, whatever time it is when you're watching this. I hope it's good. And I will see you guys again in another video. Bye.